Samsung might be cooking up something big again, and this time, it's all about the Exynos 2600 chip. But here's where it gets wild. It looks like there might not be just one version, but two. Yeah, two different Exynos 2600 chips could be in the works. One faster, one slightly slower. And that could completely change how Samsung handles performance in the Galaxy S26 lineup. So here's what's happening. A few days ago, people spotted what seemed like an underclocked version of the Exynos 2600, basically a toned-down version that runs at lower speeds, on a benchmarking website. Everyone thought, okay, maybe Samsung is testing it, maybe they're trying to keep it cooler or more battery efficient, but now another version has popped up, a faster one, and it's showing much better performance numbers. That's when things started getting really interesting. Because if you've been following Samsung's chip story, you know they've had a bit of a rocky history with Exynos chips. But lately, they've been turning things around. And this new Exynos 2600 looks like a serious step forward, especially if it's truly their first ever two nanometer chip. Now, let's break it down in simple terms. The Exynos 2600 has a DecaCore CPU. That's 10 cores total, split into a one plus three plus six setup. So one super powerful core for heavy stuff like gaming or rendering, three mid cores for multitasking, and six smaller cores for basic tasks that save battery. It's a balance between power and efficiency. The faster version of the chip, the one everyone's excited about, reportedly runs its main core at 3.80 gigahertz, the three mid cores at 3.26 gigahertz, and the six smaller cores at 2.76 gigahertz. That's blazing fast for a phone processor. But the slower version, the one that showed up earlier, runs at 3.55 gigahertz, 2.96 gigahertz, and 2.46 gigahertz. So yeah, definitely a step down, but not by much. It's still powerful, just more conservative. And that's why people think Samsung might be testing both versions for different models. Now, here's the fun part, the benchmark result. The newer, faster Exynos 2600 pulled off a single-core score of 3,355 and a multi-core score of 11,621 on Geekbench. That's actually higher than its earlier results, even when it was already running at full speed before. So this shows Samsung's engineers are clearly still tuning it, pushing performance while improving efficiency. And that's a really good sign, because if the Exynos 2600 keeps improving, we could see Samsung finally closing the gap with Qualcomm's Snapdragon chips. Imagine a Galaxy S26 Ultra that performs just as well or even better than its Snapdragon counterpart. That's a big deal. So what's the plan here? It looks like Samsung could be going for a tiered chip strategy. The faster version of the Exynos 2600 might be used in the Galaxy S26 Ultra, the top model, where performance is everything. Gaming, multitasking, camera power, AI, you name it. Meanwhile, the slower version could be used in the Galaxy S26 and S26 Plus, where battery life, cost, and temperature control are more important. It's honestly a clever move, because not every phone needs to run at max speed all the time. A slower version helps keep temperatures lower and battery life longer, and it's cheaper to produce. That means Samsung can keep prices more competitive while still giving great performance across the lineup. And who knows, that slower version might even be used in other Samsung phones down the line. Maybe the Galaxy S26 Edge, which some people say might return, or even the Galaxy Z Flip 7 or the next Fan Edition phone. Remember the Exynos 2400e from the Galaxy S24 FE? The E version basically meant a slightly optimized or efficient version of the main chip. So if Samsung releases an Exynos 2600e, it'll probably be for those more affordable or compact models where they need to balance power and heat. And let's not forget one of the biggest challenges for modern phones, heat management. Phones are getting thinner and that means less room for cooling systems. So having a lower clocked chip can really help with that. It keeps things smooth without overheating during long gaming sessions or while recording 4K videos. What's also interesting is that this whole thing might mean Samsung's confidence in its own chips is finally coming back. For a long time, people preferred the Snapdragon models, especially in markets like the US, because Exynos just couldn't keep up. 
But now, with this new 2 nanometer technology, Samsung is trying to prove that it can go head to head with Qualcomm and maybe even beat it in efficiency. The 2 nanometer process means the chip is smaller, faster, and uses less power. It also means better AI performance, which is becoming super important with all the new AI features coming to phones, like real-time translation, enhanced photography, and on-device smart assistants. So this isn't just about speed, it's also about smarter performance. If Samsung nails this, the Exynos 2600 could become a big turning point. It might even help Samsung reduce its dependence on Qualcomm in certain regions. Imagine a future where Exynos is strong enough to power every Galaxy flagship globally. No more split between Snapdragon and Exynos markets. That would be huge. Of course, right now, we're still in leak territory. These are early benchmark results, things can still change. The final chip could perform even better, or Samsung might adjust it for battery life instead. But one thing's for sure, Samsung is testing a lot of configurations, which means they're serious about getting it right this time. And honestly, I'm here for it. The Galaxy S26 Ultra might be shaping up to be one of the most powerful Android phones ever made. And if it ships with the faster Exynos 2600 in some regions, we could finally see what Samsung's in-house chips are truly capable of. So yeah, two Exynos 2600 versions might sound confusing at first, but it's actually a really smart move. One chip for raw power, another for balanced efficiency, and both helping Samsung step up its game in the chip war. If these leaks are true, 2025 might be the year Samsung fully redeems the Exynos name. And honestly, I can't wait to see how the Galaxy S26 Ultra performs when it finally launches.